Hey folks, we're back. Thanks for watching those commercials. We're getting into Catalyst for game one. Gumiho versus Keen. Also, Rickapy, dear sweet Rickapy, thank you for the 43 month resub. Briefly dropped into chat before passing out watching. Miss you guys. You too, man. I know you're sleeping out here in this, but in case you watch the VOD, good Hello. to see you stop by. Actually, it was really odd. I was playing co op at like 3 a.m. And yeah, we're skipping the intro for a cool Rifkin story. I was playing co op at like 3 a.m. And this guy's like, real Rifkin question mark? I'm like, yes, like, hello. He's like, oh, Ricky P says hi. I'm like, what? I got cued into a game with like Ricky P's like husband or boyfriend or whatever. It was just so weird. <laughs> I have two stories about that. Well, uh, I'd love to hear him in a sec. Let's get the intros done first, shall we? It's the other semifinals yeah. for the Alima League, folks. And it's a TVT. To the top left, our first T is going to be none other than Gumiho. And he cheese in. In the bottom right, he has the blue terror and he is keen. So, one, I think we skipped the catalyst last time to do the story time, which is kind of funny. And two, I was playing co-op yesterday to beat the mutation. And I've beaten the mutation the past couple of months, like the first try, which I'm pretty surprised by. They've, they've been kind of easy. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like... They've been easy for far too, like far longer than I remembered. But anyways, this time I was word reanimator, right? Which is usually somewhat difficult. I feel like it really wasn't difficult this time. I was playing with a guy that I didn't really like because he was like trying to tell me what to do. And I just, I'm not going to play to that, right? But <laughs> we were winning. I was like doing well enough without even following his directions, which were bad suggestions, I'll call them. But I wasn't going to do them. Anyways, the guy just left when we had the last pilot about to leave because one of the, um, they had like one of those bullshit spawns where... We were on the far left side of the map, and then they were like, oh, there's an attack headed to the other ship on the far right side of the map. And it was just like, it was really BS. Like, I couldn't get there fast enough. So the guy got angry and he left, but there was literally like, we had one more life, and I, we were like, so absolutely owning so hard. And he just said, fuck that shit, and then he left. Have you and then ever I won by controlling his units. So I don't I don't understand what that guy was, was upset about. Have you ever encountered some of those really obnoxious trolls who a team kill you? Really so cool and so No, fun. not yet, no. Not that many. It's like once every like maybe hundred games, but like you'll get a guy who you know uproots his his Dahaka command center to come attack you and pulls the drone. So I'm like, great. I'm glad we wasted this time together. Right. I, <laughs> I, I've heard about it, but I've never had it myself. So I'm pretty fortunate. But now we get to see how the two racks unfolds, and it was uh, pretty obvious to be rough. a two racks. Well, pretty obvious for us, obviously. But Keen has no knowledge this is coming whatsoever. His only Reaver is about to leave the base. And Gumio held back, by the way. If he had jumped in right away, Keen would have kept the Reaper at home, maybe had something to defend with. Now it is wildly out of position, and Innovation, or excuse me, not Innovation, Gumio gets both of his Reapers up here to the main. So, Keen does have a, almost a counter build ready to go, but it really would have been nice to have his Reaper here to, to buy more time, because clearly he's going to lose some SCDs, there's just simply nothing to defend. But once the Helen and the Reaper pop out, that's about, that's the Helen's the quickest thing you can get. You follow up with a Cyclone, hopefully buy some time, and you should really mitigate losses. But Keen's got to hope that his Reaper does some uh, equalizing amounts of damage. Yeah, he's really got to focus on it. He needs probably, he needs at least three, like literally exactly three here. And uh, things will be looking a lot better for him after taking so many losses. It's going to happen, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Also, yeah, someone... Huh. Huh. Give me a got supply blocks. How? That doesn't even happen with this guy. Oh, well, he's about to stay supply blocked if that Reaper finished the SCV, but unfortunately not, so finishes up. But Reapers come home, they deal with this. I think part of the supply block, uh, it was his fourth Reaper, I believe, that was actually blocked first. Just all kinds of awkward for giving me on this one. Was he... Was it part of the build? Did he mean to go for a command center faster, but then realize the Reaper was going to interrupt his plans? Like, I don't... That's a little bit odd. He's still making Reapers and going into a Cyclone here. Keen could underestimate how much Gumiho dedicates to this. And that could be a way that Gumiho recovers, because losing those SCVs along with Supply Block has put him behind here. Well, funny enough, if he goes for an all-in attack, it could still work. Reapers actually help outclass the cyclones in big ways like each grenade hit is actually devastating to a cyclone interrupting its damage flow so even exactly. though it might be two or even three cyclones to one the reapers still might be able to win this fight out for gumiho right 
The barracks also provide some high ground. Seeing three cyclones, I think that's going to be too much. But if Keen had, for instance, gone for a command center and a tech lab on the factory or something to get the Banshees faster, this might have been Gumio's chance. But three cyclones, ah, it's not going to happen. What's cyclone base armor? It's one? Yes, yeah, one. Yeah, it takes away a lot of damage from the Reapers because, of course, they have low damage output attacking twice. Yeah. Now Gumio has to worry about whatever Keen is, is throwing up here, which is the band. Oh, I just... Back. Sorry. I said like the weirdest nostalgia kick. There was a... A caster back in the day when there was a hundred million StarCraft casters. He was like an ESL caster. I can't remember his name. But he would call it Hellions Helii... Or Helions. And for Aww. some reason that just came into my brain and I just got like really mad looking at that Helion running into the base. Like it's like when you're 10 and you start playing StarCraft and it's Zealots and He Lions and. Well, funny enough, Zealots for me came it. from like Diablo 2, playing my Hammered in an X3, you know, that kind of. <laughs> but then. But the, my point is that you, you don't know how to pronounce it, right? So. Right, it's the same unit though, same spelling. Is that the same unit? I, I really doubt it's the same unit, Rifkin, in Diablo and in StarCraft. You are correct. <laughs> I misspoke. Is there a Mr. Spoke? No, only Miss Spoke. <laughs> uh, looks like he knows that it's Banshees. It starts coming up now. Yeah, oh, he's got two deep force. That's gonna be nice. But this also means two Cyclones aren't at home on the defense. Banshee picking off Marines, and this suddenly looks really, really, really bad for Keen. Oh my uh, god, he just, he, yeah. just, he just saunters up to the main. No fucks given. No quarter given. He can actually put enough grenades on the ramp. It would act like a force field. <laughs> That's kind of what he's doing. We're trying to. Uh, but the Reaper numbers are falling quick. The Cyclones are surrounded. He's got to kill that one Cyclone over here. Three to one, but he's not Parker's firing, so he's not going to win this fight. Okay. Oh my god. But. <laughs> Gimme doesn't win the fight. He wins the war? Question mark? He's ahead nine SCVs, and his commander is finishing. Workers, yeah. I mean, it's nine SCVs to two mules for a little while longer. As Gumio's like, he's struggling still on 20 SCVs. He can't really afford an orbital that quickly, but I feel like the SCV count does work out better. I guess we can watch the income graph and definitely find out. But yeah, the SCV should. I, I want to believe in the power of mules, but that's that was single digit worker count. Oh no, oh no, oh, it's gonna die. Who can say where the road goes? Well, that's is that sad. the waterfall song? <laughs> I don't know. It's a stupid song my friends have been singing lately for sad moments. Yeah. It's got stuck in my head, but... Yo, that was, uh, that was Keen's hope to try and keep Gumio on his toes. There was always that chance Gumio moves out, the Cyclone goes in, at the very least draws Gumio back home, but with that now gone, Keen is really in a tough spot. I do like what he's done, though, by the way. The extra Raven, I think that the utility the Raven brings for these small-scale engagements is going to be massive. Definitely right about that. They both have the same same idea, though. Same seas. And uh, Gumio still is going to have the seven worker lead. It's TVT. Comebacks can certainly happen, but they're not really on the unit type, I feel, that allows for those comebacks. It's all, uh, you know, very small but powerful units. So the Ravens are going to be equally good for, for both of them. And Gumio just straight up has a lead here. And once they get the stim or maybe one person decides to go for a third CC and the other one doesn't, so then that's where perhaps Keen would come back either direction, but it's just, it's it's going to be the same exact like unit comp and Gumio has more. Hey guys, did anyone else notice the title of the stream was incorrect? I wasn't quite sure considering how many people are complaining about this not being impact versus innovation. If you weren't aware, the stream title was incorrect and I've since changed it, but just in case you weren't aware, I think you should definitely complain about it a little more. Please thank you. With regards, Rifkin. Oh, anti arm is huge for this. The Marines and the Cyclones all have such high rates of fire, but with this being what it is, both players get blanketed in anti air. Is the auto turret going to be what wins this? No, not even close. Three Cyclones from behind, though, that are unscathed, unoranged, if you will. Gumio oh, ends no. up cleaning up. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> what? Unoranged? What? Unoranged? <laughs> What? It was. It, it does describe the situation. Oh my God. 
I don't know. I don't know, bro. Uh, even grabs one of the ravens here and is is gonna significantly damage this other one. Okay, didn't quite see it, but still. Gumio coming out ahead, uh, head and SCVs ahead and army ahead in the third command center and the production. Keen at this point has no comeback. Uh, I'm fairly certain the banshee, the late, late, late banshee might just grab 20 SCVs. But oh, just kidding, it's scanned. Never mind. Uh, I have, by the way, since updated the title of the stream, I'd appreciate it if you guys could give it a refresh. Just double check for me that it is correct now. I don't want to refresh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like somebody read the title of the stream. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I wish that I worked. Like... Do you like reverse donations to streamers? If you read this on stream, you owe me five dollars. Well, mean, honor code what, dictates. In what world would that ever work? That Ricky Gervais movie where people don't lie. But that's not so much lying. That's just a command. Hmm. You're sure. <laughs> that's right. Maybe if you were Kilgrave. Oh my God! If Kilgrave types something on the internet, does it? No, he has to speak. No, because right? it's like there's pheromones or whatever, right? Oh, that's right. They like increase the the range of it. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, these ravens are just kind of funny to watch. They're it's a non-issue here. I feel even though cyclone count was looking decent for Keen going into this, he was never going to outclass those ravens. Yeah. Hey, this game really is mostly over, and I know the supplies don't quite tell such a significant lead, like why you're already calling it over. It's that Gumio is at probably what, what should have been one of the weakest points. He's saturating his third base. He's, you know, his direction isn't quite ready to go, but Keen is still far behind on both of those options as well. So Gumio just gonna continue extending his lead. Soon enough, the army supply will be super drastically, funnily bad <laughs> for Keen. So, I have here. not seen so many auto terrorists I've seen in this game. <laughs> Not often yeah. you see four ravens at 11 minutes. Nah, but I mean, the thing is, Gumiho, I don't think it's... It, it, there's the GG. I don't think it's safe to say he was necessarily like toying with his... or playing with his food or anything, but he was finding difficulty like closing that out. Right, right. Um, I, I feel like literally in minutes, he'll have a dozen tanks and a dozen Hellions, and that would have been the easy peasy closeout with four ravens. Oh yeah, totally, but... yeah. Yeah, he knew it was up. He knew. By the way, we had a uh, sub some time ago. I apologize for missing this. We kind of got into the game with the proxy kicking off, but prepare for me to say this incorrectly. Jay Shinrei? Close some hoping. Thank you for that brand new sub. Glad to have you on board. Uh, Zero Grad also cheering a thousand bits. Good morning to you, my Baneling busting friend. I hope you're well. And I guess. As we continue to just advertise regularly. While we have no really cool replay packs to send out today, we're gonna have some first come, first serve type information for our subs later tonight. If all goes according to plan here, um, we should have a really big public announcement like by the end of the day, but I'm hoping closer to the middle of the day, we'll have something special for Base Trade TV subscribers in the Base Trade TV Discord channel that you'll get to see a little bit before the public and you'll get access to a little bit before the public. So if anyone wants to check that out, make sure you sync up your Discord, you join the special invisible sub-only channel that you can only see if you're a subscriber. And uh, of course, it's just a good utility to have anyways, as we, it's where we do a lot of our sub-content nowadays. Right. Well, let's hop into Blackpink. It's game two, Keen versus Gumiho. See you guys on the map. Right back into it. We continue on with the Alima League semifinals. Spawning here in the bottom left side of the map, a man with many ravens, but more proxies. We have the Blue Terran Gumiho. In the top right, as the Red Terran, he is Keen. I would love to see Keen 
win this series. I know that's a bit of a stretch here as we're one game deep in his opponent's favor, but uh, Keen getting to the finals, I think would show us some cool games, but I think Gumio versus Impact, we're gonna get some nice games. I'm like really jaded on who I want to take this, but just a quick reminder for those who are just joining us, there's still a best of seven grand finals guaranteed TVZ matchup that the winner of this will go on to. Yes. I would be pretty happy to see Gumio versus Impact um, again. Sure, it's a rematch for a recent series. And with um, Gumio being so good at TVT, I'm not even going to say with him winning the first game or with him doing a T-Rex again here, just in general, Gumio's TVT is, is what has propelled him to victories in online tournaments for years at this point. I'm pretty sure he's going to be the one of the finals. Yeah, but Chaos Theory, right? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> right? No. Uh, Keen is once again going for what could sometimes be considered a... It's so hard to say counter build, because it all comes on a micro, but it's a very good build to start off with. The only thing that goes better is if you also, like, scout maybe just the close proximities. Like, you literally scout for the two racks and you see it. That's the only way this gets better. Um, or if you can wall off the Reaper hop-up spot, which is black-pink, and you can do it with one supply depot, I believe, so... It's already a bit better. Looks like he's planning on a factory expand. Uh, he's taking guys off of gas already. This is one part of the game that uh, I think like, I, I understand in terms of like why they do it, but I'll never understand the timings or how to be this precise in my own play where people pull off gases. Like I think we see this with Protoss more than others, but still like the precision of like going for one mining for a little bit, then going back to two. I'm just like, I need gas now! <laughs> well, luckily up until the very, very pro level, you probably don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so this is a bit awkward as the Reaper... Oh, actually, no. I thought I the Reaper Well, now it does. As long as and I can get away with battle cruisers, I really don't have to worry about anyone being good at this game. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, this this worked out so much better, I think. Well... He can't overstay his welcome though, which is going to be scary here, yeah. as two more Reapers about to pop from the backside, so he could get sandwiched in. To be honest, the way that last game opened wasn't so bad for Keen either. Kine? I don't know where I was going with that. For Keen either, because he did get those SCDs with his own Reaper that went across the map. But I do think this is the better version of the game for him. It's a lot more normal. Um, he gets the, the faster command center, which I think uh, might be better than the, the faster starport. And... He takes care of the Yo. Reapers 100% this time, so no worry about that follow-up with the Cyclones. I really like that he repaired that Hellion too. Uh, if he had not have, that could have been more dicey, but either way, it's a solid hold. Solid position. Mm -hmm. It's a very solid position. Gumiho is now, at this point, I think, very far behind. He doesn't have a Starport to say that he has better tech than Keen, and he doesn't have a Command Center to say that he's on par with the economy of Keen. Like, it just... Everything points to Keen having this lead, and as long as he doesn't play especially greedy, which he's not, going into the medevac once again for the Cyclones, he'll even control the game from this point out, because this the, the medevac is just better than whatever Gumio has right now. Oh, we're just going to take the watch chair to the north, not that really anything to see. These Reapers try to sneak in, they get a shot or two off, but this is nothing scary. Easily cleaned up. Gumio, mm, he had a lot of power last game because he had a lot of leftovers from his opener. This time around, really just not the case. I mean, I know you already stated that, but I really want to drive it home. Like, there is not much. I love it. Like, he said he doesn't have leftovers of his build. <laughs> Put the leftovers in the fridge, honey. He'll come back later with a cyclone push. <laughs> That's kind of what he did, though, right? <laughs> Took it in one of those, like, Ziploc bags. Put it in the brown lunch bag, whatever. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. Uh, this is a great scouting barracks. It, it, the best thing Gumio can do right now is just have 100% knowledge. So he sees a third command center. That just means his third command center is pretty safe. He doesn't see a third command center, but it's not Banshees. He does have to worry about being busted on the front with a um, influence matrix, but it's something that he might be able to accommodate because he knows at least that it's happening. Oh, this drop out of Keen getting a lot of SCVs picks up to get out of there too. No lock-ons. Now Helling's turned to the natural base. This is a, such a pain for Gumio. Now down 10 workers. He's just going to tap out. Don't blame him. <laughs> GG. Keen ties things up one to one. Boom. Uh, Lord Mixolydian says, why do I riff in $5? Well, 
<clears throat> hey, I forgot to change the title of the stream. Which is now fixed. But B, we've got a bunch of really just dishonorable people in the chat today. I can't, I don't even know what to say. Zombie Grub especially of all. Five dollars, guys. This... <laughs> I don't know why I think it's so funny. I just the idea of someone reading that and like one person who might actually go like, hmm, okay, fair okay. play. He got I me. Guess so. But anyways, um, I guess you are gonna in effect give me five dollars here. We're gonna go to commercials real quick and we'll get to game three when we get back. Hey guys, we're hopping into game number three. Things have been tied up one to one, and this is the second semifinals match. Several people are asking what happened with impact and innovation and well, spoiler alert incoming, Impact won the series. So like I said, the winner of this place, Impact, best of seven grand finals after this concludes. To the top left, we have once again, the blue Terran Gumiho. In the bottom right, as the red Terran, he is keen. Now I've been pretty vocal about trying to get people on our Discord. So those who have taken the moment to actually get on Discord, I'm about to type a message into the sub-only chat that you, well, first off, should keep secret because it's in the sub-only chat, but secondly, you may find very, very interesting. So I'll, uh, I'm just gonna put the camera on you for a second, Zombie Rebel. I try and bait people into finally syncing up their, their discords. Okay. Well, we, um, we saw Keen go for a one base build twice, uh, although one was a starport expands, one was a factory expand. The point is he gets double gas. That kind of deters Gumiho from continuing to do tier axes as maybe he was thinking who could possibly do it two times in a row last game and he could have thought he would possibly do it three like three times in a row this game that's not the case keen once again goes for double gas but so does Gumiho this time i think you know once is a you know whatever but two is an actual trend yeah whatever the saying is so Gumio is going to try and play a different game, maybe one to match what uh, he thinks Keen is going to continue to do a little bit better. And Keen is once again going to go into the factory expand. Let's check Gumiho. Oh, Gumiho too. Okay, so they both did the exact same thing, even. Probably both go for two Reapers and a... Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Maybe a Hellion first, but... Since no one's too racked and they could go into Cyclones, we be pretty safe. We got the camera back. Thank you for that zombie grub. And yeah, if you guys are on the base trade TV discord, check that sub chat. There's some cool stuff you're going to really enjoy seeing. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Haha, yeah. Yeah. -ha, it was hilarious. Right, zombie grub. Thank you for helping sell that. <laughs> you're welcome. I was laughing at some someone else who was trying to sell something different. <laughs> I should. I've been doing like these kind of clickbaity titles for our reruns recently. I just want to be like, <laughs> doctors hate our subs. Find out why. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, that's gonna kill the SUV. That's nice. Big solid on the command center. Keen's gonna have to pull another one to deal with that. Not uh, the end of the world, but certainly very annoying. Mhm. Mm uh, they both went for basically the same thing. Yeah, even down to the cyclones. I think I see what you're laughing at now, but... <laughs> yeah. You're bad people. Both of you. <laughs> you know, Gumio goes for two Cyclones. Keen only has uh, the one because he went for a Hellion. Technically, Gumio could push across the map, but uh, he doesn't have the Reapers, so he might be, like, considering it's not worth it. Grenades, am I right? Right. Five damage. Talk about unbalanced. Well... Crowd control, fuck up an imbalance. This isn't WoW, StarCraft. I do love actually, that that is right now my favorite part about StarCraft. There's so so very limited things that do proper crowd control. Like I think of a fungal growth, I don't really think of it as crowd control. It's meant to be damage and like a big engagement fight thing. But subtle things like a phoenix lifting something or the reaper grenade forcing units to stop attacking for a second are really like finesse things. You can't just like easy peasy myth. Bigger spectacle players can handle it well. Yeah. Like, the Interference Matrix is obviously crowd control as well in the matchup, but it also is a bit more of a... I don't know, it's so on the nose, right? Where the grenade is something that really requires quite a bit of micro and, and forethought. Oh, don't Anyways, you dare imply Terran requires skills on me, girl. That's a dangerous statement to make. I'm pretty sure out of all of the complaints about Terran, like, few of them are that it doesn't require skill. Most of them are just that, like... 
your 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 units are bullshit or or something. But I feel like I hear much more often one A Protoss and one A Zerg. It makes it listen to Terrans all the time. I don't know. Also, uh, let's continue to do secret paid content. <laughs> I actually just uploaded. I, I was gonna do this before, but I couldn't find it. But I just uploaded the pictures of uh, relevant stuff so you guys can see them if you didn't before, if you weren't subbed when we talked about them in the first time. But okay, it looks like a couple SCVs dying over here. Small problems. There's a lack of detection, is costing these SCVs their lives. Ouch. Well, the same thing could have been said. The oh, scans I like that second scan. That's a good second scan. Oh, Keen. If only you had an alive missile turret. Ah, uh, there's not enough space in the back. Oh no, he's still gonna get out. He has it. Oh, that's so. That sucks so much though. He almost didn't need a second scan. Even then, he still lost so many workers. Like even chasing the banshee off, killing or not killing. Like a second one comes in, and there's the same problems that were presented before, right? Using the second scan means there's no scan energy available, and this thing could just sit on top of the SCVs for a good amount of time. Yikes. So, GG? Or... Yeah, Gumiho's getting away with so much. I'm surprised Keen's like, like... He's just weathering it. I guess he does some counter damage too. Yeah, yeah. Other side of the map, but this has been pretty annoying. I was gonna say, without the counter damage and without Gumiho kind oh. of... Oh. Uh, uh, further delay in the command center. Yumi also might have been like, he's got to have a scan soon, right? Or uh, Raven's got to be coming out soon, right? Okay, he, he dips back in. <laughs> Get out. Delete this. <laughs> this is very bad for Keen, who decides to just push across the map. This is a decent uh, push, I think. He knows the Raven's without energy. It might be a surprise. Maybe Yumi has salvaged the bunker at this point, but... Oh, oh my god. I'm a genius. He salvaged the bunker, as I talked about salvaging the bunker. Oh! <gasps> This could go well for Keen. Gumio doesn't realize the push is coming. Or it could go well for Gumio, because all of the is still going to be an issue behind. if that Raven dies. Well, that, but also the Marines weren't weren't with the tanks. They <laughs> so this just turns into an awkward. I have the same army as you, so let's meet in the middle. It's Leela fighting Leela. I have an advantage because exactly. I know all of her moves. It's exactly what it is, except that one of the Leas is a Banshee, and that's what. I guess gives a the extra power. Is it starts with base trade? Really? Uh really? if it does, I mean Gumio has thirteen less SCVs he needs to kill to win the trade. <laughs> he has a tank and two Vikings, but tank's not gonna be sieged. Something going right here for Keen. I and think Gumio can hold on the high ground. I don't think he actually needs to take the fight if he doesn't want to. Yeah, why is Gumio not just holding the high ground? Okay, he did siege that tank. Yeah, with that tank siege stop, this pretty much seals the deal. Two Vikings can land and deal with most of what's left. Meanwhile, back on for Keen, he's trying to do the same thing, but the Ravens are a big problem. He could actually just interference Matrix or auditor at those tanks and... Oh, hello, SCVs. Goodbye, SCVs. Keen's gonna know that he's in trouble now. Oh. <laughs> the reverse of what I predicted happened, but then still ended up happening anyways. Auditors, today... GG, Gumiho takes a 2-1 lead over his opponent. Keen trying to make it a funky game was, was probably his best bet. But Gumiho too good. Well, guys, uh, gotta give a big thank you to Bloodlust. Or excuse me, no, Blood Dust for the 8-month resub coming in. Secret for us? Yes. Secret, secret. I got a secret, 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 I got a secret, and I shared it with all of you guys. But it's, uh, it's, again, we're going to be giving you guys access to it first before anybody else will make it public later today, so. If you're going to bed after this is done, like I am, unfortunate, but for everybody else and the majority of the people that will be awake, hopefully uh, you can get some cool stuff out of it. But anyways, enough being cryptic, I don't want to be that guy for the whole stream. Uh, lobby is not up yet. I guess we gotta wait for Keen to pick the map. Right. I don't remember what his limiting choices are. Hmm. East well, well... No, we did East Watch, I'm pretty sure. I'll just join the lobby before you and pretend like I guessed. 
because uh, <laughs> it's going to be like I think of the maps remaining, we probably have um, Neon. yeah, Eastwatch. Oh, oh, I start with Eastwatch. Damn it. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> By the way, uh, if any of you tuning in right now are from or around Vancouver, British Columbia. May 18th and May 19th, we're going to be hosting a tournament locally called the BTSL Vancouver. All the information is up on our Twitter. You can type exclamation mark BTS on chat if you want details. We've currently got about 40-ish out of 64 total tickets sold. So if you are in the area you want to come, there are spectator passes for pretty cheap. There's competitor passes. It should be some pretty good times. But the big, big deal is Zombie Grub, Maynard, Wardy, myself, Hero, Impact... DNS, Drogo, and Jon Snow are all the players and casters flying in and hopefully with some more on top of that. Fun times. But okay, here we go. Eastwatch game number four could be the deciding match as Gumiho is up 2-1 if you've just tuned in. See you guys in game. Once more into the breach in this best of five. He's got one point on his last life to the lower left side of the map. We have the red Terran Keen. In the top right, there's the blue Terran. He is Gubio. I'm actually pretty excited for the BTSL, but I'll I'll make mention of this at the end of the stream. I do want to, I just want to remind everybody though that this is actually like one of the last scheduled casts. There's not a lot on the schedule. And that's not to say I won't come back and try and do something over the next week or two, but so much focus is going to be going into making sure this live event goes off as smoothly as possible. So like, for example, tonight I'm actually meeting up with somebody to take measurements for cords and we got to figure out what we need to rent that we don't already have. Zombie has got like a trophy on her way to her that she's going to bring with her. Like we've got so much stuff in the works for this. that so this next week is going to be pretty dedicated. So I apologize in advance as it will be a lot less content on the channel, but this is all for the live event, and then afterwards, get back on that casting grind. Totally, totally. Oh, uh, once again, both opening up with a double gas. See if they stick on all six SCVs on gas this time. No proxies, of course. Well, I think Yumi has been deterred by that so far, and Keen hasn't shown that he wants to try it. Yeah, actually, what's interesting about Gumiho doing this, it's not that it's necessarily like super hardcore failed, but it's more that it hasn't super hardcore won. And those are supposed to be like quick victories, like you just out Reaper your opponent and laugh your way to victory, and he's not been able to get that. So I can totally see why he's dialing back. Uh, but Gumiho, I feel like he was... So Keen's not a bad player at, at, at you know, in any regard. His TVT is pretty solid as well. He beat Zest, actually, so where I, I say usually... He might fall to Protoss, that's not even true anymore. And he has been doing a bit better than normal in a very consistent way. But Gumio just is, like, it's it's a shock when he loses to any Terran, uh, basically. In an online cup. Offline, I guess it's still a little more back and forth, but... So, not surprised that I think he's still going to win here, like, this game, if he takes it to the macro game. The T-Rax was kind of putting him at a potential disadvantage if Keen had a good build against it. <laughs> Please disregard that sub. I just was getting very upset with the bot trying to use our emotes and it not working. That's... <laughs> that looks pretty silly. So is it gonna work now? I mean... It should. I don't know. Someone would have to sub for oh, us to see. Go. Boom. Okay. Agarazzi's got her back. They were the 37 in a row? Nice reference, dude. Hmm. This doesn't go so hot. Give me actually takes a lot of damage on that Hellion before anything even begins. So now that the Reapers are damaged, she's got to pull back. But he can't really. The Hellion will eventually catch up and the cute Reapers from regenerating. So kind of sucks for Gumiho. Eventually I have a grenade to throw down. Doesn't say that Reaper though. Did that make a really weird sound when dying or was that just me? That was just you. Okay. Right. Sounded like a firework without the explosion, I guess is how I would describe it. Okay, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, so 
Gumiho is going for the medevac drop this time with the Cyclones, whereas Keen goes right to the Banshee. Keen's been favoring the, the medevac drop, so it's kind of a, it's a bit of a role reversal. And it's something that Keen is going to be able to scout. Saw nothing on the starport, and generally nowadays that is going into the medevac with the two Cyclones. If you don't have the Cyclones, maybe it's a Liberator, but usually it's the medevac. Thank you, Serenity. 24 months, two years. Well, it's not 37, but two years isn't bad. Thanks for a great two years. Hey, right back at you. Also, thanks for giving me something to talk about because I hate TVT. <laughs> TVT is amazing. I think TVT gets to the point of amazing. And actually, you know what it is? TVT for me is kind of taking the role of what ZBZ used to be. I really hated the openings of ZVZ. It was so boring waiting for the macro roach game, but then when they got into it, it was like really intense. And now it's kind of the case here. Like once you get tanks and ravens and vikings, and it's not just cyclones, I really enjoy TVT, but there's just something about this unit. It's so boring to me. I just don't enjoy it. Well, the cyclone itself isn't a particularly fun unit. I do think the, the way the builds collide is interesting. You had the minute back drop versus the Banshee opener. The Banshee at this point is like, it's, it's almost just a complete failure. Yeah, the second Banshee on the way, and it's going to have Cloak, and that might do better, but it's two Banshees against a Raven, uh, or it's it's almost never any damage, really, because you got to be able to pull the, the Raven back and forth. So, Gumio catching that Banshee was super cool, and even if he didn't catch the Banshee, the Cyclones can do damage. Um, as you see here, he's going to try and grab the Command Center, which is... It might just happen. The DPS is extremely high on Cyclones. It certainly inches it a lot. Yeah, positioning there was very cheeky. To say the least but raven to raven to deflect off of this kings will be a little bit later and give me a second one won't be here right away i don't know if you can really break this though that bunker is actually really that's a that's a really good bunker to have three cyclones interference matrix the tank and the uh, scvs they actually can't get a full surround in this bunker anymore with the tank positioned as it is i think we might be able to break this raven comes in from the side there we go okay the Cyclones almost took two full shots from a tank, but it was like the Marine in front of something that Ooh. soaked it. That pickup micro out of Gumiho was nice. Saves that Cyclone. Yeah. But equally nice uh, reaction from Keen. Instantly pulling to the bunker. The tank did die. That was what was focused, so they get the full surround on it. Uh, Marine could focus on the SCV if he tightens this up. There we go. Target fire is going to be super annoying to stall out this third for Gumiho. Gains, of course, is an orbital done in base, so not on location, but hey, a third orbital is better than no third CC. Right. <laughs> Things might even out here as you know, that was kind of the perfect amount of time to delay that, and now Keen knows he should be able to put his on location immediately. He thinks a great white 1919, but Twitch Prime sub. Gumi goes back in with the Cyclones, but since they're injured, oh, and Interference Matrix, he definitely can't do anything. Yeah, Interference Matrix on the Medivac even, it's just like way too deadly to consider risking this. <laughs> you got great white, but Kohar66, also thank you for the 10 months, and type exclamation mark, Jibby. Jibby recently got his computer back. I've missed that guy, man. I'm always tuning in for the broadcast. He's a nice little Jibby in the chat. He's just been gone for a while. It's been like really lonely, so I'm glad he's back. Exclamation mark, Jibby. Oh, oh, no, he did break the rocks. So was... Where did the rocks go? Okay. There's uh, not a lot to really do with this, though, but Gumiho staying here, it does, it's enough of a threat that it might have been able to draw Keen back home if he lands on top of the tank, for example. But in fact, it does draw Keen back home, who had started moving out a little bit on the map. This is where Gumiho is going to try and surprise Keen. Front push perhaps to the natural, sending out a couple of scouting units, something that Kane has yet to do, oh, but finds the drop. Okay, that's good, but that might be better than Gumio knows it drops on the way. He knows the front's probably open, and he knows that he just has to bulk up the uh, reinforcements at home, and he might be able to get a lot done with his push and, and hold off the, well, the severe amount of damage that Kane could have done otherwise. Kane's Yo. just walking his units at this point. I always think about this positional stuff when we're talking about the game and watching these guys do it, but I never ever think about it in my own play. <laughs> I'm just, right. It just sounds so easy, but yeah, Gumiho with the sick predictions, finds stuff around the map. Keenan the main is going to get denied. These Marines are sitting here waiting to respond. Oh, that but there's no was... combat shields for Gumiho. 
Oh, that's a good point. It's a good point. Um, his upgrades also were later than Keen's. He's going lots of plus one armor just now with plus two uh, weapons. So I guess he'll he'll eventually get farther ahead. But temporary pause here is Gumi also didn't want to tackle three tanks and that many Marines. Like he has interference matrix, so technically he could have, but uh, a bit dangerous to do. This might work out. The stim hurts Keen's uh, Marines, and they were a little late. But Gumi needs to spread out these Marines. There we go. Oh, and then there do something else go. with them. <laughs> okay, he's gonna get some. He was distracted over here, understandably so. He tried to catch those medevacs, but uh, a little bit awkward now because Keen has his production compromised. Tech Lab's getting picked off. Reactor's getting shut down. This is so expensive and frustrating for a Terran player to have to deal with. I mean, even not just gas and minerals, but time costs to rebuild all that. Hmm, for sure. Some pretty cool army movement around the map. I mean, they're both trying to catch each other's drops. They're both trying to catch each other's armies out of position. So both of them are focusing on, on two places at once. I think Emil comes out ahead. He has a 4th CC and his upgrades are going to be... Well, they're going to be farther ahead faster. I don't know how else to put that. Like, eventually, Keen will have better upgrades with plus two armor on the way. Kume is going to have plus two um, attack for a much longer time and potentially for this fight, which would be really, really nice. Uh, I don't know. Keen should be clicking on the units. Five seconds, five seconds. Let's take the fight. Oh, Raven can interfere with Matrix. No, oh, it just destroys the Marines. The minus three armor here is going to be devastating. Gumio can't take this fight. Wow. And that also happened just before the attack finished. So I think the attack would not have been uh, as good as the anti air missile, but that's, uh, that was that was actually really good timing for Kian. He takes a pretty big supply lead. Wow, Wardy, uh, Wardy in the chat. Big boy here with the supply depots. I do not uh, consider you a subscriber when it comes to subbing to StarCraft 2 channels, Wardy. Well, almost perfect. Oh, that medevac doesn't go down. <laughs> oh, well, turret, I guess it. <laughs> oh! Ooh, that's a big drop waiting to happen. But it's dangerous. Okay. He scans. There's Marines waiting. He can't take a risk like that. Yeah, that was that was dangerous. I think he was hoping to see Keen's army like stim to the main or something, and, and actually be like a trick. <laughs> I think he just was hoping anything would go well for him. Oh, wants to grab the Raven. Uh, not gonna be able to. Actually, loses the the Viking forward, and now we're back to that point where Keen has the, the better upgrades. The two two to two one, but Gumio has the four, uh, fourth already set up as a planetary. Hmm. Different ways these guys are ahead, uh, for sure. Keen maybe just a little bit farther, just in general, because his army is ahead and in upgrades, but positioning is too big of a factor at this point with both of them almost maxed out to really think that's going to break uh, a tank line. Although, give me hope, please. Okay. Anti-armor missiles are still pretty big. Hits the medevacs, you know, those aren't actually that bad. It's when right. the Marines get hit that this becomes really one-sided. We've talked for years, like, one level of upgrade difference, like what we see right now, is a huge deal in TVT. But you consider that anti-armor is basically a mass AoE negative three armor? Oh, it's huge. Exactly. Also, just quickly uh, dispelling these jokes, guys. I love Wardy. I'm looking forward to seeing him about a week from now. He's coming out to Canada for the BTSL. Oh, no. Yep. Uh, thank God <laughs> he's scanning, 40. man. If he wasn't scanning, this would be <laughs> the worst move of all time. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just so close. Keen does have the more powerful position. He should be the one kind of attacking in here. But Gumio is trying to take a chance, and Keen should be well aware of that. He's seen medevacs with a, like an entire army in them multiple times at this point. Ooh. So he does have a lot back at home. Kind of catches it while it's unloading. Upgrades are even at this point. But there's more medevacs for Gumio. If he gets in the dead zone of the tanks, he can kill those. Focus fire as best he can, but the SCVs get pulled. He's got one more tank he's got to chew through. Picks up and flies away. Oh no. However, the planetary died while this went on. Right, not worth not worth for Gumio unless he's able to catch the planetary. No, definitely not. He only has one medevac full of marines. That, that won't kill a planetary. At least he'll sell out the fifth. And it looks like he's going to be able to take care of the tank line over here because he has liberators. But losing the fourth, that wasn't supposed to happen.
Well, he does get a cancel on the expansion from Keen in the bottom side. Oh! There's so there's few Marines. Marines. I know, he's just... He's trying... He's gonna get a medevac full of two... Nice. Two full medevacs, actually. Well, almost full, but still. Really nicely caught there to give me to start evening things up. And Kane has lost all of his pressure on Gumio's out of the map, so this is the time for Gumio to gain back control that'll allow him to maybe get the expansion back. Because as long as oh. it's, like, it's, it's, if it's just a tank line, if it's just a siege up, then they're not actually trading minerals. Gumio could easily replace the base he just lost. Yeah, small timing here with upgrade weapons here for Gumiho favoring over Keen. But Keen actually gets it tied up now, so it's not a problem. Gumiho actually ends up having his armor a little bit later. Right. But I didn't realize how far ahead he's full, uh, pulled ahead with the tank shots on plus three here mm -hmm. in a sec. Mm -hmm. Some decent Liberator harassment on both this base and the fourth, I believe. Uh, maybe keeping one of those alive as he is uh, being aggressive here would have been a, li a bit better, but... This is where Gumio does take a, a base, actually. He just lifted his orbital to the gold base. And he's gonna take this one out. This is su super awkward. The like, Keen almost had positioning for this, but unable to collapse in. Us, he just couldn't capitalize on this. Uh, lost the Raven with energy. I think Keen wanted to go into... Oh, okay, yeah, he does have one Liberator on the way. But it's so hard to really secure... Like, it's not the same thing as when you have air control against, uh, like, mech versus mech, for instance. Like, the Marines are, are worth sacrificing. It's only one or two Liberators that you have to deal with. And positioning is still so hard to really grasp when the medevacs are flying around full of units. Oh two, three of them go down instantly, though. Oh, no. Oh, no. That was pretty devastating, to be honest. There's not enough Marines to take this fight, which means those tanks are going to be sacrificed as well. Medivac's going down. No retreat for them. And well, Gumio might be able to try and rebuild this. You know, he took that gold. He's only just saturated it. He didn't have the money to remake these losses. Drop the tank. Yeah, I think Gumio just dies. I think that was way too bad, GG. This is actually going to go to the ace match. Uh, so that's two game fives, which is pretty, pretty cool. But... Uh, same time, I can't believe Keen won that game, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, it was... It was pretty close the entire time, though. Like, technically, Keen even had a couple of advantages. Faster upgrades and a bit bigger for an army sometimes. I just can't believe that Gumio threw... Like, as cool and as close and as smart as they both were playing, it took one bad Doom drop, and then it was just over. Yeah. Well, guys, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we get back, the deciding match. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Bambi and Ambo, for the five months. Welcome back to the Alima League semifinals. This is the very last game of any semifinals match, as the winner will move on to fight against Impact in the grand finals of best of seven on deck. Big thank you to Lux Rift for that sub coming in just as we got into the game. Much appreciated. Cool. Bambi and Ambo for five months caught him on the tail end to go to that break. And of course, now we get into the game. To the top left side, we have the Red Terran Gumiho staying at home. Yeah. In the bottom right, as the Blue Terran, he is keen. Now I have a very important request of the people in chat land or those who are just watching that don't actually participate in chat. I've, I've just tweeted something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link in chat here. If you could oblige my request, check out that tweet. I'd really appreciate it. But how do you figure about this? No, no, no cheese, no proxy, no nothing for this fifth and final game. Well, it still makes sense as Keen has done a two gas opener, four games. Looks like this is finally the game that changes and that makes sense. It's Neon Violet Square. There's no Reaper hop up spot. He could finally feel very, very safe doing this. Oh, uh, hey, I just actually spilled water on myself. Camera's on you for a sec, sorry. All right then. Um, and uh, ditto for Gumio, right? Like if Keen were to throw out an ace match cheese, that would be awfully bold of him, but sometimes it really works out. Well, not if Neon Violet Square is gonna be your last map, you know, basically pre-chosen. It's the last map available in the Illumina League map pool. You have to go for a factory cheese, which doesn't work out nearly as often in the pro level. Uh, so they both go for the one racks expands. They both aren't going to scout it. It's actually Gumio goes for the scouts, whereas Keen just figures that he's all good. Yeah, nothing sets out here. Even goes for the kind of more defensive Reaper, only one of them. And then same thing for Gumio, but he's a little more aggressive initially. So they're gonna meet in the middle. 
but Gumi has an SCV that can soak up at least one shot, and he absolutely wins the Reaper War. Okay, there you go. Now he's absolutely going to win it, as said. And with the reactor being built in the barracks and the factory taking so long to build, Keenza needs some help, exactly. So he goes to the high ground, accidentally gets his own SCV there, but takes the better trade on the health as his Reaper regained its health. And that's going to be that. The Reaper War is over and didn't really reflect too strongly on the openers. Although this might have just been all a ruse. Oh, Eye on the Reaper, and then you forget that maybe there's a proxy starport. I like that the starport comes down like this, though. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, this might be awkward, but I was going to say, uh, this could also have different build paths, right? Like, if one goes for Banshees, but the other goes for Liberators, this could be really bad still, nonetheless. Hmm. That's a good point. Gumeos is in a position that's much closer. Like, this, for me, it feels like Gumeos might do a Liberator into a Banshee, whereas Keen might just do Banshees right off the bat. Not a bad assessment. Um, I might agree with you. We'll we'll see in just a second here. But regardless if they... Oh, it's a medevac, actually. So almost. The point Whoa. is he did something different. So a Hellion drop then. Ah, into the I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Gumeos actually sees the Hellions right away, so there might not even be any cargo for that medevac to pick up. I don't know what the point of proxying it for a medevac is when the cyclones are gonna take a long time to get over there anyways. It was most likely for a Hellion drop and losing the Hellions, oh. right? It's a bad start. Oh. If those cyclones leave right away, there's gonna be nothing to stop the Liberator. Well, there's nothing to stop these two Hellions at Gilmeo's natural. The cyclones taking a long time to get out here, so maybe like four SCVs could die. You know, what's interesting is uh, I would say the depots, but that's where the medevac comes in, but there's actually not enough depots to wall it off, so. All kinds of awkward. His own Hellions come oh. across the map, but in a bit of a distracting manner, Liberator sets up on the command center. Nice. Oh, Keen's got Sometimes. no mining going on. Sometimes they pull into the natural, of course, and that's where the Hellion run by Gumio would have just absolutely slaughtered and just won the game right then and there. But Keen is trying to dance, basically. Both of them trying to dance, and unfortunately, Keen seems to be worse. Dance with the like dead. Hmm. One this Cyclone. One it's so depressing. Mm. It shoots so slow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in range to kill the SCVs that are rallied away from the mineral line. That's uh, that sucks. Should not have gotten one extra. And Keen only gets. I think that was a total of nine for Keen. Fourteen. Okay, I need to I need to put this better. Yeah, Gumiel nine. lost nine. Keen lost fourteen. There we go. But Keen also lost way more mining time though, which is I think a little more relevant than necessarily the kills. Because he could otherwise recover if he had been mashing the mining while that was going on, but he actually bottomed out really hard for almost a good 30 seconds. Just pulling everything from the natural away from the Hellions and everything away from the Liberator in the main. But he was just out of cash in like the worst way. Yeah, he hasn't been able to build from his uh, starport, oh. unlike Gumio, who is still building a Banshee. I like the Banshee follow-up because it makes it look like for once in a blue moon I can call something correctly. But secondly, there's no detection if he has to burn scans well he can't really oh god the engineer he doesn't even finish he can't build turrets oh, oh he does have a third cc and he's got to be very hopeful that that brings it back into this game <clears throat> although at this point oh give me not too far behind he can, he can just keep target firing the the turret on the scv like this is uh he, he doesn't have scans he's not going to he doesn't even get kill the banshee with scans that's true he could just target fight on the missile turret that's what he's doing that's it, that's oh, it. Oh, 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 it's gonna be a game, right? <laughs> Gotta be. GG. <laughs> <G. laughs> what a crazy, silly fifth game to go to. But that will solidify Gumiho going to the grand finals, where he's gonna be facing off against Impact, and we get some TVZ. And I'm, I really, I like this a lot because Impact can play. All right, just period, the end. But Gumiho can play. Mech, Gumiho can play. Bio, Gumiho can do a lot of really good things. So I'm very excited to see that there's going to probably be some variety here, too. But um, you guys are really bad at Twitter. <laughs> are they? You, the tweet I shared. Look at the replies to it. <laughs> None of these are the... <laughs> oh, 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 I love it. The, the fucking chicken. Amazing. The fucking chicken. Oh, my God. I fucking forgot. Fucking chicken man. No. He didn't he didn't skip leg day. That's perfect. I don't know why you're so upset. I forgot about drawing that in that whiteboard forever ago. Oh my god. <laughs> Not a single waifu though. God damn it. 
<laughs> Although, thank you, Pseudo Neo, for attempts to suck up to a picture of me from three years ago. Oh, God. All right. Oh, God. We're going to hit up a break while the lobby gets set up. I know you just watched some ads, guys, but it is what it is. It'll take a few moments anyways, so I thank you kindly for watching. I hope you check out stuff about the BTSL, and we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs>